Hello everyone, my name is Abhi Bharadwaj and I'm back with lecture series on science. Today's topic is going to be climate change and I'm going to focus on uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, in today's series, my focus would be on methane gas and then we will continue with other gases in uh, other lecture series. But let's uh, start uh, with the methane gas and see where does it come from, how does it get introduced into the atmosphere and and what we, what we can do to prevent it so so let's get started uh, I'm going to discuss two data first is gonna be global data and other one also the US data so let's see how uh, the global data looks like so when you look at the global data for example for all the gases about 65 percent of carbon dioxide comes from burning of fossil fuel burning of fossil fuel and then also the another contributor of co2 is forests forestry i would say or forest fires and that is about and others plus others so that's about 11 percent and 65 is burning of fossil fuel. All the cars and all the you know uh, industries which uses fossil fuel leads to 65 percent globally, and you know the forestry and others about 11 percent. The next major gas is methane. That is going to be the topic today. So methane gas contributes about 16 percent, and then we have nitrous oxide also a major contributor to the greenhouse effect nitrous oxide six percent and the rest cfc's and all other makes up here the space so this is global data this is our global when you look at the u.s data for instance what u.s is doing it's a little bit different so u.s data the carbon dioxide contribution is about 80% CO2. That's what US is adding. 80% CO2. And then when we look at the methane, for instance, methane, in US, the methane is about 11%. And then nitrous oxide is about 6%. And the rest. CFCs, water vapors, all fit in here. So this is a little bit different than global data. Now, today's focus is methane. So let's talk about methane. CH4. Where does it come from? So when we look at the methane, for instance, there are different sources of methane. And let's see what are the major, um, you know, uh, industries and, you know, um, you know, uh, things which are contributing towards methane. So when you look at the methane, the major contributor here is natural gas, right? So all the petroleum industry or oil industry we talk about, right? That is about 33% percent so it's a, it's a major contributor for methane the second one is landfills before that as actually fermentation so mostly fermentation and fermentation is basically around 22 percent contributor and then we have landfills and landfills is also one of the major ones so landfills is all the garbage you know we dump on the landfill sites started starts decomposing and produces a lot of methane gas and and that's about 20 percent and then we have raising of livestock which which is also so livestock manure i would say manure right and that's basically about um about eight percent we also have one more and that's roughly 9% is coal mining. I, want to, I don't want to miss that. Coal mining. And then others comes here. But when you look at livestock, 
you know, combined with, you know, this um, agriculture industry, if you look at the fermentation, for example, 22% and the livestock, all of this, and, 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 and you know, when you, when you combine all of this, most of this is preventable, but that's what the picture looks like. So natural gas, you know, is the major contributor, but then the, the others are also adding. And when we now look at what can happen, so say, for example, what is happening currently is that because of all these greenhouse gases we have in the atmosphere, we have already raised our temperature to one degree Celsius, already up in 2016. And it's a, it's a major rise because, you know, one degree can make a lot of difference. So that's, that's very important to know. Now, when you look at Earth, for instance, what is happening is, and I hope, you know, you are able to see here. So say, for example, Earth, What's happening is that we have permanent frost region, North Pole, all covered with ice and snow. And we have Antarctica here. Same thing, covered with snow and ice. And under the permafrost, there's a, you know, it's called clathrate. And what it is, is decomposition of decaying, uh, you know, the dead, dead animals and plants material, right? So what is happening with that is, the decomposition produces CH4, but because its temperature is lower here, so this is all entrapped here. The methane is entrapped here in this region. A lot of methane. And same thing is in Antarctica. So all this methane is entrapped in Antarctica and in North Pole in permafrost. And what happens when the temperature starts rising because of all the gases we have, this is already started to melt now. So the snow and ice is melting from both Antarctica and North Pole. And this is rising, you know, uh, resulting in, ra you know, raising the sea level. So sea level is going up. But that's not only the problem. When the, the temperature starts raising, the methane st gas is going to be getting unstable here and start getting out of, into the atmosphere. And that is the biggest concern I have. So as the temperature rises, you know, now we are one degree Celsius up. So if we go two degrees Celsius up, it can accelerate the introduction of methane into the atmosphere from permafrost region, both from North, uh, North Pole and Antarctica. And that will accelerate now because methane is 20 to 25 percent, more number, closer number is 25 percent more or 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So what does that mean? That this will accelerate the global warming at a much faster rate. So if we reach two degrees Celsius, we are seeing a lot of methane coming out into the atmosphere from these reasons. And not only that, under the, when you see the oceans, it's 70% water on earth, right? So a lot of ocean and a lot of decaying matter at the ocean floor. That also has methane and trapped because of the decomposing, you know, organic matter. So not only this, but the ocean will also start warming up and would start pumping in the methane from ocean floors. So we have three major contributor sitting, waiting as soon as the temperature starts rising, this is going to come out. So this is going to be monstrous because that's going to lead to very quick rise in temperature. So from two to four to six to eight degrees Celsius can go very quickly. And the biggest concern if we want to learn from history, when we talk about, for example, PETM, Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum, what we learned from there is that, you know, the temperature rose to 8 degrees Celsius. We had 50% all life form going extinct at that time. And that time period was 20,000 years. It took 20,000 years, 55 million years back, took 20,000 years to, you know, raise the temperature to 8 degrees Celsius, but which, which wiped out 50% of the all life from Earth. So what we are doing right now is much more worse than even PETM time. It is much more faster because when we look at one degree Celsius, you know, when you look at, for example, 1890, you see 
we had the, the carbon dioxide level at the time was about you know 290 and when we see 2016 now we have over 400 parts per million which is a quick rise in carbon dioxide level which is raising the temperature and had already raised the temperature to one degree celsius but when we and and when when we talk about methane that's 25 per, 20 time, 25 times more potent than than carbon dioxide we're going to end up releasing this methane from both north pole and south pole right and if you look at the current data in 206 we have about 3.8 million tons of methane released into the atmosphere from permafrost. If you look at the data now at 2015, you see that 17 million tons of CH4 released into the atmosphere. That's a lot of difference between 206 and 2015. So we see that the global warming has already started showing its impact as far as methane is concerned in our permafrost regions. So that is 2015 and and you know the total is about total from all sources about 500 million tons a year right now which is significant increase I mean you know when when you look at the 206 data 3. Point million to 2015 17 million tons that's a significant increase right there which points to the global warming human induced global warming and if we do not do anything to stop our greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and stop this rise in temperature now we are gonna be in a situation where it's gonna be uncontrollable and we would not be able to save this planet earth and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the life on this planet earth we have seen that in history that 50 percent of the life was wiped out and went extinct in 55 million years back in Paleocene, Eocene time. And we know for sure that this time it is much more worse than that time because it's all human induced. It's not natural, it's all human induced, which can be prevented if we pay attention to it of all the governments, you know, all around the globe. We have to stand up and, you know, talk about it and do something about it as soon as possible. If we do not do anything, I think it will be too late. And it has already going in that direction. It's already started going in that direction. So, so that was the kind of you know um, uh, uh, discussion I wanted to have in this lecture, and wanted to see you know if we can if we can pinpoint on especially on the methane, which is 25 times more potent, and how can we help stop this process of you know uh, you know uh, methane coming out of the permafrost regions both from the north um, north pole and the south and from the oceans and you know what we need to do here is basically make decisions at the global level how do we make sure that we stop pumping these gases into the atmosphere and and at least you know uh, stop this happening if, 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 if we start releasing the methane in a much higher rate than what is happening right now, then we all know where we're heading. Thank you for watching.